welcome back to SP Channel. Today I have Brother Tate with me, and I'd like to introduce him, Brother Tate. Hello, what's up, people? All right, we're going to have a CERN discussion tonight, so we may as well uh, dig right into the issue. Me and Tate were talking, and Tate has a belief that CERN manipulates time. And I have a theory that this time manipulation is how the Mandela effect comes into play. CERN was founded on September 29, 1954. CERN houses a litany of projects within the field of particle physics experimentation. By far, the most infamous of those experiments is the Large Hadron Collider, the LHC. It's the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator. It was first booted up on the 10th of September in 2008, and it remains the largest addition to CERN's accelerator complex. CERN has many different projects, including some dangerous ones. So potentially dangerous that they could shatter the very fabric of our universe. At the very minimal, cause a temporal paradox. CERN uses the LHC to accelerate particles of mass well beyond the speed of light. Normally, physical matter breaks down into energy as it nears the speed of light, as Einstein's theory of relativity suggests. But, the Large Hadron Collider, being the marvel of engineering that it is, incorporates the use of plasma injectors like Project Awake and magnetic fields like that of ATLAS, the world's largest electroneodymium magnet, to accelerate particles well beyond the speed of light. The interesting thing about accelerating those tiny particles to such incredible speeds are all those atoms have their own microgravity. In fact, every object that has mass has its own gravity. These particles that CERN accelerates to such incredible speeds actually cause distortions in the fabric of space-time itself. Picture mass as it sets in a four-dimensional fabric. This four-dimensional fabric called space-time. When anything that has mass sets on this piece of fabric, it causes a dimple or a bending of space-time. This bending of space-time causes the object to move on a curved path, and that curvature of space is what we know of as gravity. To put it in simpler terms, think of the diamond tipped glass cutters you see in the spy movies. Only diamond can cut through the glass that smoothly because of its density. Now what could you cut gravitational waves with? You guessed it right folks, gravity itself condensed to a denser state. This is how CERN is affecting time. The Mandela effect is an ongoing paradox. The Mandela effect is what happens when someone has a clear memory of something that never happened in this reality. Many of us remember the exact same events with the exact same details. However, our memories are different from what's in our history books, newspapers, and archives. We're not talking about false memories here. Many of us speculate parallel realities exist, and we've been sliding between them without realizing it. Many speculate that CERN's experimentation with gravitational waves has affected space-time, causing distortions between our reality and a multitude of other parallel realities close if not similar to our own. So how are these events changed? What's causing this Mandela effect? What is time? While most people think of time as constant, physicist Albert Einstein showed us that time is an illusion as it's relative. It can vary for different observations depending on our speed through space. To Einstein, time is the fourth dimension. Space is described as a three-dimensional arena which provides a traveler with coordinates such as length, width, and height, showing location. Time provides another coordinate, direction, although conventionally it only moves forward. I would also like to add in the idea of what a time machine would use for fuel as stated by theoretical physicists. Time machines often are thought to need an exotic form of material with so-called negative energy density. Such exotic material would have bizarre properties, including moving in the opposite direction of normal matter when pushed. Such material exists. It is called antimatter. It is reportedly only in quantities too small for practical use. Supposedly, I believe that CERN may have easier access to it than we have been told. It's difficult to discuss time and the Mandela effect without covering paradoxes. Oh. 
Okay, let's discuss a few paradoxes. The predestination paradox. The predestination paradox occurs when the actions of a person traveling back in time ultimately it causes the event he is trying to prevent to occur. He then becomes trapped inside a temporal causality loop in which event one in the past influences event two, which then causes event one to occur. With this circular loop of events, thus ensuring that history is not altered by the time traveler's journey to the past. In other words, any attempts to stop something from happening in the past will simply lead to the cause itself instead of stopping it. This paradox suggests that things are always destined to turn out the same way and that whatever has happened must happen. Does it sound complicated? Imagine that your lover dies in a hit and run car accident and you travel back in time to save her from her fate only to find out that on your way to the accident that you are the one who actually accidentally runs over her. Therefore, you cannot change the past, and furthermore, anyone attempting to do so may literally find themselves trapped within a repeating loop of time. One way of dealing with this type of paradox is to assume that the version of events experienced are already built into a self-consistent variation of reality, and that a time traveler trying to alter the past will only end up fulfilling his role in creating history, not altering it. And once again, we want to thank you guys for joining us here on SP Channel. Remember, we couldn't do this without you guys. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming to listen to us tonight. We simply could not do this without you guys. Thank you so much. And make sure to tune in next time on SP Channel.